Welcome to Worldview Matters, discussing controversial issues, discerning current events, defending biblical Christianity. No topic off limits. And now, here's your host, David Fiorazzo. Hey friends, you are in for a special treat today. I'm going to just uh, skip all the beginning of what I usually go through here. We'll get to that at the end of the show today, but I just want to bring in today's guest, Jan Markell of Olive Tree Ministries. We've talked a lot in the past on a lot of different platforms and on radio, but it's so good to have her on Worldview Matters. Jan, welcome to the program. Hi. David, thank you for having me. It's an honor. Oh, it's, it's an honor for me to be able to speak with you, and you've been such an incredible blessing, not only to me personally, but uh, to, to people, evangelical Christians, who are encouraged to study the Bible, even the Old Testament, <laughs> and, and Bible prophecy. And sure. you've been such a blessing through the years uh, where that goes. So there are two things I wanted to talk about today. One of them is one of your articles recently on Harbinger's Daily, the top Bible prophecy stories in 2023. And I know you could list, I think you said you could list 110, but they, uh, they've got a top 10 here. And then an older article from earlier this year after the, uh, what happened in Israel, an appeal to pastors on uh, just don't keep silent on Israel. So maybe let's start there, Jan. Let's go back to October 7. We were talking a little bit before we got on the air about demons being unleashed. I believe those are your words. And I would concur uh, basically not only what happened, but how they carried it out. We've mm -hmm. never seen anything like it in, in our lifetime. So your thoughts on that first. Well, it, I mean, it almost surpasses um, the Holocaust, not in, in numbers and all of that, but, but you know, uh, I mean, the Nazis uh, tried to bury what they were doing, and uh, hmm. this bunch of radical Nazis, so to speak, uh, were proud of it, were broadcasting it everywhere they possibly could. Um, and, and, and I've talked with my guests privately and on air several times, and something was unleashed on October the 7th, um, 2023, and it seems like um, a horde of demons were let loose, which is not a pleasant thing to sit and talk about, to be honest. Mm. But I think we need to try to think about why that might have happened. And my short answer to my own question would probably be, the Jews are the key to the end times, to God's end time plan, the nation of Israel, the Jewish people. The devil has tried to not just derail them for m millennia, uh, but obliterate them for millennia. Mm. <laughs> Haman, the pharaoh, kings, generals, furors, you go on and on, have tried to obliterate this people. The devil has had a campaign, and I believe he thinks, <laughs> kind of an insane plan, he thinks he can derail God's end time plan which sends him to a terrible pit and has someone said he doesn't like his retirement plan. And so he's <laughs> trying to change God's plan for the end of the age and he won't succeed, but he keeps trying and trying and trying and trying. Um, so that's just a, sh that's a short answer to your question. Yeah, and there's, there's nothing new under the sun. I mean, Satan has come against God no. from the beginning, from the initial rebellion right. in heaven where a third of the angels, are, you know, really, they, right. they rebelled. But even King Herod, remember trying to stop the Messianic line so that right. the Jews, you know, he, right. didn't he, he murdered babies two years old and under. Yeah. And talk yeah. about demonic evil, even in that day, trying to prevent the birth of the Messiah, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, they're called the chosen people. And, and I mean, they're chosen to play a major role in, in God's plan from the beginning of time to the end of time. Hmm. Um, and and the, it's a terrible thing to be a people chosen by God. It really is, uh, because... You can be assured the world is going to hate you if, mm -hmm. you if God has chosen you and has a specific assignment for you. Um, therefore, the devil is going to do everything he can to obliterate that plan. And that's what's been going on for millennia. It's just that now we're kind of kind of heading to the end of the church age. Um, and, and what's different about our generation, David, as you well know, is this is the generation of mass communication, of cable news, of social media, 
of, of internet activity. And with the click of a mouse, we can now be apprised of mm -hmm. anything going on all over the world, which is both a blessing and a curse. Um, so news like this travels literally in the click of a mouse. What if, what if Adolf Hitler had had technology? Now they had the early, early stages of technology in the 30s and 40s. Nothing like we have today. But imagine the carnage that could have happened with yes. 6 million people, possibly multiplying that 6 million even more than that. Um, but But we are the technology generation, and therefore... Now you and I have to sit and watch some pretty gory pictures coming out of uh, out of Israel, and it's heartbreaking. And I got to just say to you, and I'll say to your audience, the last couple of months has been heart wrenching mm. for me and for for lots of people. Mm. It's been heart wrenching to see those innocent people who mm. were, to be honest, those Jewish people in southern Lebanon, excuse me, in southern Israel, were by and large liberal pers persuasive pers politically liberal mm -hmm. they felt that they were in southern israel to befriend the uh, gazans to bring them into israel for medical purposes and to be of any kind of a help they could be again with the rather ser serious flawed thinking that you can appease a people like that and be friends with them and now we know you can't. And I hope that's a good lesson to the whole world. Were you surprised at the apparent failures of the IDF and uh, the the technology that should yeah. have warned Israel that something like this was in the works? Were you surprised? We were all surprised and disappointed. Um, but I will not go as far as the conspiracy theorists are going these days. And some names you and I might even know that is very disappointing, yep. uh, suggesting that Netanyahu and his um, intelligence agencies looked the other way so that this could happen. And wow. whatever the purpose of that is, I have no idea. Um, some respectable people are saying things like that. Mm. Uh, again, I could name names. I'm not going to. But and I've encouraged my audience to stop listening to these people because <laughs> as Amir Safadi and, and I both say, and Amir being an Israeli citizen, of course, living over there, that's lunacy. It really mm -hmm. is. Now, was there was there recklessness? Yeah, there was recklessness. Carelessness? Yes, indeed. Uh, as a matter of fact, the Israelis had stopped listening to the chatter uh, among the Gazans a year before this happened. Um, and again, I think they were um, not comprehending that something like this could what were the comments after 9 11 our 9 11 we lacked the imagination to to even conceive of the idea and i think the israelis did too their guard mm. was down they were not on top of this yeah. and the the enemy took advantage of that uh, um, a, a number of enemy sources came together and 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 were if i dare say it were rather cunning in their plans and preparation um, and Israel caught off guard. It was certainly the catastrophe of the 21st century Absolutely. for the Jewish people. Yeah. Before we get into some of the top Bible prophecy stories uh, of 2023 on the list that uh, Harbinger's Daily put out that you wrote, are you, I shouldn't say are you surprised, let's bring it over to our country now. And I was very disappointed at the level of not only ignorance, but support for the Palestinians and Hamas in our own universities. And that shouldn't surprise us if those of us know what the K through 12 and the university system yeah. has been putting out there. But what are your thoughts on some of these marches in some of our own colleges and universities in America when it comes to the anti-Semitism? Well, it's been a wake up call. I mean, again, uh, hatred of the Jews goes back a long way. It's very, very deep. And it seems obviously it's been brewing. And mm -hmm. I think we're all taken off guard by this, David. Who, who can, who, who's normal? What normal person is thinking that something like this is going to explode heavily on our college campuses? Granted, it's a cesspool of liberalism. We all yep. know that, and probably even communism. But 
lynched yes. the Jews, a, a people that has been a blessing to the whole world. The Jews have been, I mean, everything they do, they're a blessing to society, uh, you know, culturally and uh, even in, in academia where these young people are, <laughs> are participating. So again, David, I think it goes back to that spirit that was unleashed um, on October 7th. And obviously the spirit was very much alive and well before that. But this uh, this kicked it off. And this sort of set a fuse and it was suddenly ignited. And naturally, these young people are naive. Yep. They're, they think that, that, that they have the best insight in the whole wide world. Um, and, and some of their, their professors are encouraging this because their professors are generally socialists and communists. Um, so it was a perfect storm what happened in October, an absolute perfect storm, which then ignited a perfect storm. Whoever would have thought across the globe. That's yes. shocking. Yes. And uh, before we get to your article, one more question yeah. on anti-Semitism on the university level. There are some, unfortunately, Jewish students who are concerned, you might want to say fearful, to even go to class because of what's going on on their own campuses. And I want to bring up this point that, that came out recently, that although Jewish Americans make up less than 3% of the U.S. population, the FBI reports that they are targets of 60% of the hate crimes. I've never heard that on the media. Jan, your thoughts on that? Well, I guess I haven't heard that either. But, uh, I mean, it's a whole new day, David. Yes, and, and, yes. You know, we're, we're, we're in a run-up. We're, we're trending towards the tribulation, um, the biblical tribulation, time of Jacob's trouble. And, and the Bible says that that's going to be a time of Jewish persecution, like never known before, never wow. known before. And so this is setting the stage for that. And th I think the biggest thing this is doing is creating in the heart of the Israeli a longing for peace, peace, mm. peace at any price, please, peace and security, peace and security, bring us peace and safety. Well, somebody's going to offer that. Yeah. I believe soon. I believe very soon. The church will be gone. Believers will be gone. A man with the plan, Mr. Fix-It, will come on the scene and he'll offer the Jews a peace plan. You think they're going to turn that down? I mean, right now, that would be a dream come true that somebody would promise them peace that could be guaranteed. Problem is, um, he'll come with a kind of a conniving, scheming plan and he'll be their friend for three and a half years and then he'll double, double cross them. Um, and that's, again, in the heart of the tribulation from which uh, we are absent. Jan Markell is our guest today, Olive Tree Ministries. When you talked about peace and security at any cost, I couldn't help but think of, of course, 1 Thessalonians 5.3, when it yeah. says, for when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. That's what happens. I mean, a very mild form of that happened during COVID when we were saying, All right, we'll do anything to comply as long as, Thanks. you know, we can be kept safe. That was a wrong move. But Jan, we've got to take a very quick break. We'll be right back on Worldview Matters. Today's show is brought to you by Harbinger's Daily. World news biblically understood. Stay informed at harbingersdaily.com. So, Jan Markell, on your list of top Bible prophecy stories in 2023, um, number one, the world decided that Israel became the international burdensome stone. And that's from Zechariah 12, 3. And you say, whoever expected this new malady, that Israel derangement syndrome, in their lifetime? I think that's a good question, Jan. I don't know how many people saw this kind of delusion coming. Your thoughts on that? Well, again, Israel derangement syndrome, that's just a term I, I've given it because it's, <laughs> again, it's global. And, and so this was under the surface. It's probably been under the surface, who knows, it, clearly for millennia, but yeah. the, 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 modern, the, the modern playing out of it certainly in the last couple of decades and so it just took something to to bring it to the surface and many of us are we, we are continuing to be in a sense in shock but at the same time 
knowing the key role the Jewish people play in the last days, and particularly in the tribulation, nothing should surprise us. Nothing, nothing should surprise us. Mm. I, we're not going back to normal, David. I know a lot of people think we are. A lot <laughs> of people think we're going to turn things around. We're going to go back to normal. We're going to have peace and security and prosperity, and mm. the next election will fix everything. And I personally don't think so. I no. really don't think so. No. On top of that, a lot of people have different definitions of what normal is. Yeah, sure. Sure. Yeah. Um, let's jump to another one. You say, um, for a segment of society, love has grown cold. And this is dangerous when people become apathetic and their love has grown cold. Jan, your thoughts on that one? <laughs> well, how do you describe um, much of the world, not, not just the free world, much of, much of the whole world, suddenly being pro Hamas, pro yeah. barbarian, Jeez. pro pro a, a society that is not civilized, and yet mm. you've got millions of people demonstrating on behalf uh, of of barbarians on on behalf of terrorists, on behalf of the most brutal thugs I think we've ever known to exist, and 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 people are demonstrating that against them, for them, <laughs> they're cheering mm. them. What am I missing here? What part of society suddenly went haywire when we weren't watching and they were out there planning all of this and caught all us all off guard, so to speak, yeah. um, with a barbarian? I hate to say it, but even the Nazis, I said it earlier, the Nazis were not this diabolical. They were terrible, but they were not quite this diabolical. So, again, um, it's the perilous times of the last days, uh, Second, mm. uh, Second Timothy 3. And I see love has, as having grown cold when a big segment of society across the world are cheering for terrorists. Oh, yeah, um, that's something that, that uh, most of us have a hard time imagining. But another thing yeah. in that Second Timothy 3, uh, and this is a warning for the church, people will be lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. And as you mentioned, uh, people, with all that's going on, some people's love has grown cold. Jan, another one on your list is the church slipping further into apostasy. Surprise, surprise. We've been warning about that, talking about that for yeah. decades and decades. But one of the things you mentioned in that is the silence of the shepherds. Please elaborate. I think one of the most troubling elements of the last um, couple of months have been the number of people that have written here or called and um, Olive Tree Ministries. And, and, and they're heartbroken because the first three, four, five weeks, their church said absolutely nothing about the Middle East and, and praying for the, the, the terrible situation over there, praying for the hostages, uh, praying for all the people of Israel, even even praying for the people of Gaza, my goodness, they're, they're in a horrendous situ situation, though. If you poll them, most of them were in favor of, of what Hamas did. Um, so, I, I mean, I just say all of that to indicate that uh, we're, in, we're in the most stunning times that I can, in my lifetime, I have never seen a lineup of things. As we're closing out 2023, I've never seen a lineup of things that are so stunning. Mm -hmm. It's what I have seen, I would say, in the last, uh, two to three months, and where we're going in the new year, um, oh. <laughs> I, I almost trembled. I almost trembled to think about it. But at the same time, if we could look upon these things as a harbinger of His return, yes, then I think we have a better perspective that the Lord is trying to wake us up. He's trying to shake us up so that we'll wake up and all of us look up, because He is coming again very, very soon. Amen. And as Zechariah 14, 4 says, on that day, his feet will stand on yes. the Mount of Olives, which is in front of Jerusalem on the east, and the Mount of Olives will be split. And then that goes on. But Jan, I want to pick up on something from a previous article you wrote. You mentioned the emails you get and calls people that are discouraged with their pastors or yeah. whether the, whether it's their teaching or their lack of Bible prophecy. But one of the articles, an appeal to pastors, don't keep silent on Israel. Someone wrote to you and said, I was very dismayed that the church we attended did not even make mention of what was going yeah. on in Israel, and nor did the topic arise on not only Sunday morning, but Wednesday night. 
but there were several mentions of a pro baseball game or other things. Yeah. And yeah. Jan, is, is it because some pastors look at this as a political issue? Or I, I don't understand their silence. Can you give us some insight on that? Because a lot of people yeah. are wondering. Yeah, and I've I've covered it pretty extensively as much as I can. And so, so some of the things I say will be a little bit repetitious, but I think it's important. And I think the reasons would be number one, theological. I think that uh, those of us who, uh, those uh, out there who don't share our theology, J mm. David, um, they would be replacement theology. The church is Israel. They would oh. be, um, uh, and I don't want to get into starting to name denominations because that's not productive, but this, there's a theology thread out there that minimizes Israel because they don't feel that Israel plays a very important end time role. Uh, to them, the church is Israel and, and national Israel is just kind of an inconvenience over there. Um, but I think then this, the second reason would be that the churches don't want to get involved in what they might call a political issue, um, which they could see the Middle East crisis as a, as a political issue. I think if we could sum it up by my third point here, many churches don't want to take a stand. Yes. They just don't want to take abortion, uh, gay marriage, the trans issues. They don't want to get involved and take a stand. And, and so many of these issues... And the, and the people in the pews remain clueless because their shepherds are keeping silent about some of the most crucial issues of our day to day. So, again, that was my appeal. And I've asked my I've asked my radio guests. I've asked Mark Hitchcock. Um, I've asked a number of my radio guests. Could this be the next big church divider? And that would be the whole issue of uh, Mideast Israel. Uh, God's end time plan with with Israel and the church for that matter, and 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 my my guests say absolutely this is the next big look. We've watched the, the cultural issues, but yeah. we've got theological issues too. And the theology here troubles a lot of people that there's any special calling for Israel when a huge segment of the church believes that that was canceled because of their unbelief. So big assignment for us to wake people up and then yes. to encourage those who are in these churches to probably leave hmm. and to get people informed on the appropriate yeah. the accurate biblical worldview um in the next one that i wanted to ask you about jan briefly because we're running out of time already yeah. i love this quote you say facts are irrelevant due to the delusion of our day and i'm holding another article in my hand that says this was a couple weeks ago kamala harris announces National strategy to combat Islamophobia, not anti-Semitism, yeah. Islamophobia. So you mentioned the White House expressing deep concern about Islamophobia. This is strong delusion, right? Strong delusion. And throw in there, we're giving hundreds of thousands to U.S. mosques. Throw in there the delusion that a, a two-state solution is the total perfect solution to the dilemma over the, all of this is strong delusion, which Second Thessalonians talks about. Mm -hmm. And we're drowning in strong delusion today, just drowning. Um, one more thing, Jan, and there's some good news in this one. In number six on your list, the Jews are coming home in greater yeah. numbers and more open to the gospel. Absolutely. I spoke with someone just earlier this morning that said there are Christians whose houses were destroyed. Christians, there are some there in Gaza, and they're now in a shelter, and they're sharing the gospel with yeah. people there. So talk about Jews coming home in greater numbers. You say there's been a 149% increase in interest to return to Israel. Tell us about that. Well, that would be from France. And, and then from America, it's 80 to 90% increase in Jews wow. returning to Israel, in spite of the fact that, you know, if you're on a kibbutz somewhere, um, you know, you can get beheaded. And, and the Jews are counting the costs and saying, well, that may happen, but, but we are safer there than we are here in the West, where they're literally marching, you know, with, with, with one demonstration after another for our demise. We need to return to Israel. And this is fulfilling Bible prophecy because they need to go back to the land. Not all of them, they won't all, but many, they're going to be back in the land 
for God's end time purposes to to transpire over there. The Battle of Gog and Magog, hmm. um, Isaiah 17, obliteration of Damascus, all of that. It would be helpful if the Jews were back in the land, more so than they are now. And that's in the, God uses good out of evil and chaos. And from the day this happened, I said, God will use this for good somehow. Yes. And he is. Yeah, and he's been good to his word on that all throughout yeah. biblical history, world history, Old Testament. He brings good out of evil. We yeah. trust him for the outcome of whatever's going to happen in the Middle East. And of course, the return of our Messiah. Wasn't it Amir Sarfati that said um, at one point, because you mentioned Isaiah 17, I think he said, a lot of people are watching Jerusalem. I'm watching Damascus. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And, and Damascus, uh, parts of it are bombed constantly by, by IDF uh, for various military reasons. Obviously, it's not any kind of obliteration. But yeah, he believes Isaiah 17, obliteration of Damascus, will precede Gog and Magog. Hmm. And he believes, as do many of us, that this is on the horizon. Question is, where are believers at that time? Is that at the rapture, before the rapture, after the rapture? We don't know. Interesting to speculate on. I think the point being is we're in a countdown. Um, mm -hmm. Your listeners, if you are not, not, do not know the Lord Jesus Christ personally, don't delay. Everything yes. is on overdrive, speeding up, speeding up. You don't want to be left behind. Yes, amen. Come to the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. Whoever believes in him will be saved. Jan Markell, Olive Tree Views, Understanding the Times Radio. It's such a blessing to see you and connect with you Thank and you. get your perspective on these things. God continue to bless you. Have a Merry Christmas, Jan. Thank you, David, and you. All right, bye-bye. All right, tomorrow, friends, Todd Nettleton, Voice of the Martyrs. He'll be on the show. We've got Seiko Woods on Wednesday, J.B. Hickson on Thursday. I want to go ahead to next week. Pete Garcia, Carl Teichrib, Scott Shera, and Jay Siegert. I didn't mention our mug. You can mention the mug, Worldview Matters. They're very high quality. You can get one of these if you want to help us in our fundraiser. Between now and Christmas, we are raising production costs for the show. Just give either a one-time gift of anything over $200, you'll get a mug, or a $25 a month donation to worldviewmatters.tv. Um, what else? Um, I'm forgetting something. Oh, my goodness. This Thursday night, a live show, not a live show, but a live presentation at Freedom Project Media in Appleton, Wisconsin. It will be streamed online. I'll be talking about Assault on the Image of God, my brand new book, and uh, really how we can understand what's going on. But not only that, not be overwhelmed, not be overcome by evil but overcome evil with good and know how to respond to all these things that are happening, the attacks on Christians, the church, Israel, and of course on the biblical worldview. So friends, thanks again. We got another great week in store. Well, we'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. And as always, keep speaking the truth about things that matter.